A document that we published now almost five, six years ago uh, on our website is the Tao of HashiCorp. And what it really covers is what are those kind of core design ethos uh, that we apply to sort of all of the products in our portfolio, right? And what's important for us is that as people engage with HashiCorp and use you know, everything from Vagrant, Terraform, Vault, Console, is that they feel like there's some consistency here. There's a consistency of thought, a consistency of approach, a consistency of design. And so what we wanted to do was really peel back and document what are those ethos, what are those principles that we want to have shared uh, across our whole portfolio. And what we find is, you know, in some sense, they're not just design principles and consistency of the UI. It's partially a way to think about infrastructure management as a whole, right? What is the goal as we talk about managing infrastructure and what are the sort of broad stroke techniques uh, that make us you know, more effective, reduce risk, reduce complexity? And so I think that was the goal is we wanted to have a really clear assertion uh, to our users, to our customers that this is what you should expect from our tools and this is why we published it. Um, you know, Mitchell, maybe do you want to talk about a few of the important ones? Cool, so I think the three most important elements of our Tao are infrastructure as code or versioning as code, workflows, not technologies, and pragmatism. There's a number of ele other elements, but those three really define um, our view both internally when we design products and how we want our customers to think about the products we're delivering. Um, so workflows, not technologies, probably the most important is really core to HashiCorp the idea that we don't build tools that work just really well with one specific technology. We're trying to build really great workflows to solve a problem. Maybe it's deployment, maybe it's security, um, building infrastructure, um, so on. We're trying to build that workflow and be pretty agnostic to what technologies are underneath. And so when we were first building the company, the major two technologies in play were uh, cloud virtual machines, like things in the cloud, and on-prem data center sort of bare metal machines. And so we worked really hard to make those two technologies work. Throughout the life cycle of the company, we saw the rise of containers um, start coming and also schedulers. And so those are two more platforms that we've also had to support. And the fact that I think we've been able to support those so seamlessly in our tools is a good testament to, to this Tau element. And the benefit of that for our customers is that they adopted, let's say, a security tool five years ago. and after they adopted that security tool, all these new technologies come out, their corporate strategy shifts and in infrastructure, but even though it's shifting, they get to keep the same security tool, it remains sort of best in class, the workflow remains the same, and they get all the same benefits. So I think that's just really the most important thing that we do. Uh, the other element that's very important is infrastructure as code or um, codification in general. And this is the idea that anything that is built or configured should be represented as code, as a, as a text document. And by representing it as code, you're able to get all the benefits of, of having it in this basic format, which is stuff like history, versioning, reviewing any changes, and so on. And so all the tools that we make have an element where you could do everything as code. And then the last element I think is really important is pragmatism. It's, it's sort of like an escape hatch, but it's a really important idea that we have these elements of the Tao. We're very, very passionate about them, but we don't blindly follow them um, if there is good reasons not to. And so whenever we're building a new product or building features or anything like that, of course we would try to build a Tau, but we always have to ask ourselves, is this not a good idea for some reason? Is there a better, is there a better way? Have you know, years have passed? Have circumstances changed that we should reevaluate how we think about things? And making sure that we're always open-minded to new ideas and change is really important because you know, as, a, as a company, we like to think that we're leading the charge in a lot of ways. And I think we are, but the world continues to evolve around us at the same time, and we need to adapt to that. Yeah, and I think maybe just adding on to that, I think a, a really good example of where sort of pragmatism comes to shine for us is you know, one of our other sort of Tau principles is the notion of immutability, right? Is that we don't modify infrastructure after it's been created, right? We create a server, we configure it as you know, version five of our web server, and if we want to upgrade to version six, we create a new pristine version six, and then destroy version five. We don't try to do an upgrade in place from five to six, which opens us up to the possibility that maybe that upgrade fails halfway, and now we're in version sort of 5.5 that we don't really understand. You fall into the sort of middle ground, right? So our view has always been, as much as possible, apply the notions of immutability to kind of every layer of our stack, right? Build immutable images, sort of focus on immutable infrastructure, and you see all of our tools sort of nudge users down that way, right? We try and not make it difficult to go a different way, but sort of imply that the right way to do it is 
an, an immutable approach, right? But I think that said, we're pragmatic in recognizing that many of our customers have either, you know, large investments in configuration management systems, or they have certain, you know, applications and, you know, services that don't easily fit into the mold of immutability. And so I think, you know, a very pragmatic approach to that is we say, great, you can do both. We're not saying you have to go all in immutable or don't use the HashiCorp tools. It's where possible, where you're going to get that value and it's easiest to apply. Great, our tools make it easy to do immutable. Where you have existing investments in configuration management or want to do things more manually, great, that plays nice with the tools as well. We don't force you uh, into one camp. So I think part of that ethos is accept that infrastructure already exists, it's large, it's complex, and we can't just force everyone to do it the way we think it should be done, right? We have to be pragmatic and practical and say, okay, great, how do we help you get some of the benefits without forcing you to sort of boil the ocean and do everything the way we think it should be done? Yeah, I think there's a human element to that too, which is uh, a lot of new technologies tend to think, you know, philosophically that that's the best way to do it, and so you should do it that way. And it's not that, you know, these companies we're going into don't want to do it that way. That might be the truly be the best choice. It's there's a lot of very practical reasons, you know, historical types of technologies, um, you know, mission critical aspects of it, regulation. There's just a lot of reasons out there that they just can't yet, and and it. Really, we didn't want to be a technical vendor that walked into a room and showed this like bright, beautiful future, but didn't give them any way to get there. We, we you know, it, it seemed a little mean to just be like, "This is what you could be, but you're not." Um, instead, we like to go in and say, "You know, this is what we hope and, and plan for you to become, and here's how we could get you there over the next, you know, two, three, four years or something." And you know, while you're getting there, you're still using best-in-class tools with your existing opinions and practices.